This is section 8.4 on binomial probability. We need to talk about a couple of definitions or explanations and then look at the formula for binomial probability. Uh, the binomial experiment is the same experiment repeated a fixed number of times and there's only two possible outcomes, success and failure. The repeated trials are independent so that the probability of success remains the same for each trial. All right, so the formula is here and you'll be referring to that when you work the few problems that we're going to do. But here's the formula where P to the X is the probability of um, a single incident and then you fill in the rest. So let's, let's put that into play and look what it looks like in a problem. Um, a recent survey found that 59% of college students attend more than one institution during their college career. Suppose a sample of six students is chosen. Assuming that each student's college attendance pattern is independent of the others, find the probability of each of the following. All right, so the probability that exactly three of the six attend more than one institution. So you have six students, six trials. So that means N is six. The P is 0.59. That's the 59% that are going to attend more than one. So we turn that into 0.59. To find the probability that exactly three students attend more than one, let X equal three and use the formula. So. Remember that we have a combination of n things taken x at a time. So combination of six comma three times p to the x is 0.59. X is in this case three. So here's our three. So 0.59 th to the third times one minus 0.59 raised to the n minus x. Remember here's n and x, so six minus three. Then it's just a calculation. So you can do the combination in your calculator times 0.59 to the third times this number to the third and you get approximately 0.2831. They will usually tell you what you want to round it to. The second one says that none of the six attend more than one institution. So we have n is six, x is zero. C of six comma zero times 0.59 to the zero times one minus 0.59 to the six minus zero. So anything to the zero is one. So we have one times one times 0.0048. So we get the 0.0048 final answer. So that's how we're gonna use it. We're only having a few problems on this. So problem one, of our problems, and I've put the, the uh, formula up here to remind us. Suppose a family has three children. Also suppose that the probability of having a girl is one half. Find the probability that the family has the following children. Exactly one girl and two boys. So N is three children. X is one girl. C of three taken one at a time times one half, which is the probability of having a girl, to the first power, times one minus one half to the three minus one. And you figure that out, so we're down here to three eighths. We did it all in fractions, which is what it wanted. It did not want a decimal, okay? So out of the three children, to have exactly one girl, this is the probability. Suppose that a family has two children, and suppose the probability of having a girl is one half. Find the probability that the family has the following, no boys. So N is two, that's the two children. X is the girls, and we're, we're saying zero. We want zero. So two children taken, two taken zero at a time where X is the girls, times one half, which was their probability of having a girl, to the zero, times one minus one half to the two minus zero. You go through here and you get one fourth, okay? A die is rolled 12 times. Find the probability of rolling the following. 
exactly 12 fours. So you're going to roll it 12 times and x equals 12 and the probability of rolling a, tw a uh, 12 sorry the probability of rolling a 4 okay we have we're trying to see so the probability of a 4 well there's six numbers on a die so the 4 would be 1 out of 6 all right so we have c of 12 comma 12 12 things and x is our we're trying to get exactly 12 fours uh, times 1 sixth which was our probability raised to the 12th times 1 minus 1 sixth is 5 sixths to the 12 minus 12 which would be 0 so we have 1 times this number times 1 and it does say use scientific notation so that's what we would get probably come up that way on your calculator A certain unfair coin lands on tails one-third of the time. It's tossed three times. Find the probability of getting all tails. So n is 3. That's the number of tosses. x equals 3, the number of tails, which is what we're trying to get. Probability is 1 over 3. Okay, we've got that there. So let's plug all that in. The combination of 3 comma 3 times the probability raised to 3 times 1 minus 1 third to the 3 minus 3 which is 0. 1 times 1 27th times 1 and you get that. It does want, you can do it this way you can do it on the decimal since it wants six decimal places just divide one by 27 or you may have gotten decimal if you were using the calculator anyway all right a certain unfair coin lands on tails one-fourth of the time and it's tossed five times so n is five p is one-fourth find the probability of getting no more than three tails so we have a few things to do all right, so either x is 0, x is 1, 2, or 3. So we've got to do this four times. So if x is 0, you have 5 comma 0 combination. Um, 1 fourth is the probability to the 0 power, and then 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths to the 5 minus 0. So you see we're doing that. We get a decimal answer, 3 divided by 4 to the fifth. Okay, then you do it for x equals 1, you do it for x equals 2, you do it for x equals 3, and then you get all of these things. There are answers for each one in yellow, and we're going to add all of those together, which I did here, and your answer is in blue, 0.984375, and that would be the answer that goes in the box rounded to four decimal places. So you're just repeating this formula over and over with just different and then adding to get your final answer. I think that'll get you through 8-4.